I'm Kendra Falk Edwards, and I'm the Chief Growth Officer for Cardon and Associates. And we're here today with the Cardon Resource Hub, and I'm excited because we have Pamela Dunlap with us here today, and she is the owner of Sage Insight, and she is an elder um, special uh, elder care and wellness specialist, and she's been doing this for 30 years. And I asked her to be a guest to kind of talk to us about what are some tips and things to think about to make take that stress off of us when we go in for a short-term rehab stay in a community after surgery, post something, post hospitalization, and kind of just talk through those tips with us, Pamela, today. Hi, thank you, Kendra, for having me. As an elder care consultant, helping seniors, rehab to wellness is truly my passion. Thank you so much. I'll go right into it. Um, if you or a loved one have experienced an orthopedic or a medical procedure that requires an inpatient rehab stay prior to going home, I hope the following tips will be helpful to make the most out of your rehab stay. Let's begin with talking about your suitcase, things you want to pack in that suitcase for your rehab stay. I recommend at least five outfits of comfortable clothing. These are going to be clothing items that are easy for you to put on and to take off, and they're appropriate for exercising, as well as appropriate for using exercise equipment in the rehab gym. I do recommend a pair of closed toe non-skid shoes, at least one pair. Also pack a pen and a journal. I highly recommend keeping track of your daily progress, your goals, your questions, and education that you will be obtaining from your therapy team and your clinical staff while you're at your rehab stay. You may wanna bring your favorite pillow or blanket from home. Also bring a very long charge cord for your phone because you're not quite sure where that outlet is going to be or where your phone will need to be for you to access. I recommend bringing tape, perhaps duct tape or painter's tape, and a marker so that you can label all of your items, such as your charging cords, your cubes, your personal items, and any durable medical equipment that you may bring from home. I also recommend a dry erase marker. This has been helpful when writing on a whiteboard, which is often in a rehab suite. Um, information such as, if there are any changes in my treatment plan or condition, please call my daughter or my POA and indicate the name and the phone number. That way, anybody who is in the room that is a part of your care team and the rehab team will be able to see easily who to contact. Just a suggestion. I also recommend to begin discharge planning as, upon your admission. Request a care plan meeting within the first few business days of being admitted to a rehab unit. Request a representative from the rehab team, the nursing team, the rehab social worker, and dining staff to gather with you to identify and to set goals that are needed for your optimal independence at rehab graduation. Medication tips. Bring a list of medications from home and compare this list with the medications that are being administered at your rehab. Oftentimes, medications are placed on hold when you're hospitalized. Ask to speak to the rehab physician or nurse practitioner to assure accurate and updated medication reconciliation is done upon your admission. Inquire and ID all medications administered by your nursing staff. This will be helpful and best to prepare you for independent medication management at rehab graduation. Therapy tip, day one, ask your physical therapist what exercises you can safely perform in, independently in your rehab room when you're not in the therapy gym, such as strengthening exercises in your bed or in your chair. Use your phone, your smartphone, to record the therapist demonstrating these exercises to remind you when you are independently trying to act them out in your bed or chair. 
During therapy, frequently ask the therapist to observe your technique, your posture, your proper use of the equipment, and when at all possible, perform your exercises in front of a mirror. Nutrition tip. Your nutrition and hydration will affect your outcomes in therapy greatly. I recommend a diet low in sugars, high in easy to digest proteins, leafy greens, no soda, minimal caffeine, and lots of water unless medically restricted. You may need family and friends to supply you with your preferred foods during your stay. Most rehab rooms have a small fridge or perhaps use the refrigerator at the nurse's station with your items marked. Sleeping tips. A good night's sleep is imperative to a successful rehab outcome. This may be challenging being in a 24 hour care environment. So consider bringing these items to your rehab stay. A fan for white noise, a diffuser for lavender oil to aid in your sleeping and calmness. If your bed is uncomfortable, consider purchasing a twin XL bed topper like memory foam from Target this will make an ideal gift to a college student when you're done using it, I promise. A co-pilot tip, choose one or two people to help you during your stay. Someone who will be able to visit you, bring items to you, be a second set of eyes and ears in therapy, when meeting with a doctor or a nurse practitioner, or when you are attending your discharge planning meetings. Mental wellness tip, Practice relaxation and meditation techniques when you're not in therapy to aid in your mental and physical repair and healing. Most rehabs offer therapy six days a week. This means Sundays could be lonely. Arrange for visitors to come to visit you on Sundays, bringing your favorite carryout, bringing your pet for a visit, and possibly bringing games. Home evaluation tip. After the first week of therapy, consider scheduling a home evaluation one week prior to graduation from your rehab stay. This evaluation usually includes one or two therapists observing your physical abilities in your home environment, identifying any barriers, need for adaptation, or to identify additional goals that need to be addressed in your rehab stay. This is a great opportunity for car transfer training and navigation of possible stairs. Graduation planning tip. Planning to go home will most likely include choosing a home health company to continue your physical therapy and occupational therapy in your home. Talk with your social worker on your rehab unit to choose the best home health company to follow you as you transition from rehab to home. Medicare does pay for insurance for your home health skilled needs as you transfer to home. For more information about any of these tips or to get assistance with these tips, please contact me, Pamela Dunlap, Elder Care Consultant with Sage Insight. Thank you. Pamela, that was awesome. I That's hands down probably the most comprehensive, well laid out um, list mm -hmm. and idea. So thank you for sharing that. I know that will be really helpful for people that find themselves in that really stressful time. It's emotional. What do I need to do and what to expect and what to do? So I really appreciate you sharing those tips with us today. Thank you. 